All right, we've got a one kilogram block sliding up a frictionless ramp. It's going to hit a spring with spring constant of K equals 100 newtons per meter. It is solidly attached at the top. The angle of the incline is 50 degrees. Initially, the block is located at position A that is 60 centimeters away from the uncompressed spring. At position A, it has an initial kinetic energy of 20 joules, meaning it is moving up the ramp. What is the kinetic energy of the block at the instant it has compressed the spring 15 centimeters? In other words, at position B. It doesn't tell us that the block is stopped. It's asking us for the kinetic energy. It could be zero. It could be something else. What is it at 15 centimeters of compression? Here's the diagram describing our situation. We've got our uh, block of one kilogram right here starting at position A. It's going to slide up the ramp 60 centimeters until it hits the spring here at x initial equals zero, and it will compress the spring to a distance of 15 centimeters, which we'll label xf, and now the block will be at height h above our reference point h equals zero when the block was at position A. Up here, at, when the spring is compressed 15 centimeters, that is position B. The spring constant is 100 newtons per meter, and the angle of the ramp is 50 degrees. Okay. How much kinetic energy does it have at location B, is the question. So we're going to use the word kinetic energy theorem. During the time the block is moving up the ramp, Gravity is acting on it the whole time, so we'll use the work done by gravity over this entire height h. The spring, however, is only doing work during this section right here. All right, so here's my equation for work done by a spring. Here's my equation for work done by gravity. Together, that is the net work, and that's going to equal my change in kinetic energy, which, of course, is the work kinetic energy theorem. Okay, I have to recognize in my diagram that this height h is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle right here, which is my angle of incline. So the hypotenuse is d plus xf. So d plus xf times sine theta is equal to height. So in my equation for work done by gravity, I will replace h with d plus x quantity sine theta. The spring starts out not being compressed at all, and then at my position B, the final position, it is compressed by 15 centimeters. d is 0.6, x is 0.15, the angle is 50 degrees. At the initial position, I have 20 joules of kinetic energy. At the final position, that is what I'm trying to find. So Kf is my only unknown in that equation. I can solve for Kf, and I get 13.2 joules. Another way I could have done it, if you chose to use the equations of motion and find out what's the acceleration of the block, that does work for part of the problem, but please do not use equations of motion whenever a spring is being compressed or is pushing on an object because spring forces are not constant forces. And with non-constant forces, we have non-constant acceleration, and with non-constant acceleration, we can't use the equations of motion. I can use it, though, for the time it moves from A to the spring, because during that time, only gravity is acting on it, and that is a constant force. So if you chose to do it that way, first you would figure out what is the acceleration of the block. So here is my force along the direction of movement. It is the component of the weight that is along the ramp. So my force is mg sine theta. This is Newton's second law, of course. The acceleration is g sine theta down the ramp. Now I can use equations of motion to figure out how fast it's moving when it reaches the spring. So the square root of 31 meters per second is just before it hits the spring. Then, while it's compressing the spring, I can't use equations of motion. I have to use this work kinetic energy theorem. 
just like I did over here, but now I'm only applying it to this small portion. So the work done by the spring, there's my equation for that. The work done by gravity, now the height that the gravitational force is, is acting over, the height is XF sine theta. That's in this small triangle right here. The hypotenuse times the sine of the angle equals this small height right there. So I can do that. And then K final, of course, I'm still trying to find that. And now my initial kinetic energy is not 20 joules. That was down here. Now I have to use the kinetic energy at this spot right there. So that's 1 half mv squared, where if v was square root of 31, v squared is 31. And now plug in my numbers, solve for the final kinetic energy, and of course, I get the same answer. This is just another way of doing the problem. I should still get the same answer. Part B, how much net work is done as the block moves from position A to position B, where the spring is compressed, 15 centimeters? So we really have already found the answers to, the, to this question. Uh, we just have to be able to identify it in our equation up above. So the net work is the sum of the spring and the gravitational work. In other words, it's the left side of the equation. So it's the sum of these two numbers. So that is negative 6.8 joules. The negative is very important. That means energy is being taken away from the block. Both the spring and the gravitational force are both doing negative work because their force is down the ramp while the displacement of the block is up the ramp. They both act to slow the block down. That's negative work. Now we could have found, you could have done this a different way. If you chose to use the component of weight, that means you might also have chosen to use this equation for work done by gravity. The work done by any constant force, any constant force, is the force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay, so when we look at our displacement, it's right here up the ramp, and our weight is straight down, so I've labeled that angle between those two vectors as phi. And you can see that is going to be this right angle here, 90 plus the uh, angle of the ramp. So 90 plus 50 is 140 degrees. And D is still the distance to the spring plus the compression of the spring, 0.6 plus 0.15. And so now I get the same number here as the work done by gravity that I got over here, 5.63. And of course, the spring equation was the same. So that came out to be the same as well, 1.125 joules, as you see over here. Part C and D, again, it's just recognizing where in the equation these values are so you can identify them. Here is the work done by the spring, 1.125, so that's my answer for C. And here is my work for gravity, negative 5.63, so that is my answer for part D. And then the last part of the question asks, what kinetic energy now do I need so that the block goes up the plane, compresses the spring by 30 centimeters, and that's where it stops or comes to rest? What does that kinetic energy at position A need to be for that to happen? Now the spring is going to compress 30 centimeters. So XF is going to be 30. And I need to know how much kinetic energy does it need to have here so that by the time it gets up here, that's what it will do. It will compress the spring by 30 centimeters and then come to rest or stop momentarily anyway at this position here, XF. Okay, so there's my work done by the spring over the compression. And they told us that the spring needs to compress 30 centimeters. So there it is. And before the block hits it, it's not compressed at all. Its initial compression is zero. Mass times G times H. Remember, H is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. So my hypotenuse of that entire thing is D plus XF. And that XF now is 30 centimeters. Okay. Uh, it stops at the highest point, 
So that means the final kinetic energy is zero. And down here at the bottom is where the initial kinetic energy is. And so that's what I'm trying to find. Plug in all the numbers and solve to come up with my initial kinetic energy of 11.26 joules. You wouldn't get the right answer if you did not know that the work by the gravitational force and the work done by the spring are both negative.